Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily inspirational chat. Today's episode number 652. I may call it six, I'm really saying I keep calling the whole number, I'm going to go 652, much easier. Um, <laughs> and the topic today is do you react or do you respond? We're going to go deep. Um, this is actually a continuation or actually a branch off of yesterday, but I'll get to that in a moment. Before I go into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Surprise! <laughs> I, I am a best-selling, best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I do this, and also why I inspire these talks every day. That I do every day now. Um, been talking for over two years on this on this theme called "Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart." So today, the topic is: Do you react? Do you respond? And I'm reviewing my life for the last few days to see where I fit in that spectrum, because it's a spectrum in, in a way. And I'm going to break this down in a way that will help you perhaps change your emotional state, your mental state, and your physical state. Yes, this is going to be useful. Stay tuned. And by the way, just to be, before I come any further, this is a Facebook Live I do every day. Um, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, it was Facebook Live first. So just so you know, going forward, if you want to catch me live, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook is where you find me. I'll give you the link for that at the back end. And then when you when you do that, you can also interact more easily on Facebook because on uh, YouTube, comments are basically delayed and I don't get them while I'm doing the live talk. So to the topic at hand, do you react or do you respond? Going deep. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? But let me break it down this way. <laughs> okay, headline, 90% of the planet react because <laughs> that's the truth most people maybe not you but people you may know are controlled by what the happens in the events in the world so most people who watch the media the news um, that sort of thing tend to react to what is said or what is not said or what is shown versus responding exactly Evie yeah shocker <laughs> But the thing is, we all have a degree of reactivi re reactivity, reactivity, yeah, reactivity, that happens in life anyway. And I, I'm certainly no different from that. Even though I've done, even though I've done so much work, you know, I've been in the personal growth industry for many, many years, and I've learned how to be centered and neutral most of the time. But it's not all the time. And so I want to speak to a couple of instances this past week where I watch myself on the cusp of this, and then I'll give you a teaching and some insights to help you change perhaps your behavior or people's behavior you know. And again. I've said in other broadcasts, if this speaks to something you know your friends need to hear, please share it with them as well. And maybe put a little uh, invitation or a link to some people if they think they need the help, or they might get some negative feedback if you tell them about this one being relative to, relevant to them. But you know what I mean. So for those of you who weren't online this week, you may not have been aware that Facebook and Instagram and um, Snapchat went bye-bye for about 12 hours. And for some of us <laughs> who, well, I won't say live and breathe, that's too much, but who use Facebook a lot, it was a little bit challenging initially. And frankly, at the beginning of the day when, I, when it was, wasn't working, it was going, this is weird, I started reacting. Yes, even me. Because <laughs> I ain't perfect to this, but I'm working on it. But it became very clear that something was going on, it was out of my control. And once I realized that it was out of my control, because this is the thing, but I'll talk about control more in a moment, I let go of it. Yes, I kept checking in every hour or two, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less, but I got on with other things and I really learned to let go, or I should say remember to let go is a better way of putting it, than other things. So that was one thing. Second thing, which actually was reminded because of this event, um, I got booted off of Instagram about, I think it's about three months ago now. The funny thing about that was I wasn't so shocked at the time or, or irreactive at the time, but I was very aware that it was inconvenient. So inconvenience falls between reaction and response in my, in my spectrum, it might in yours too. But the thing, and, and I'm just talking about social media as a platform to talk about anyway. Um, but I've found that to interact with them has really been a pain in the butt because there's no people there. It's all automated and you can send requests and messages and nothing comes back. So the futility of it, the futility of it, excuse me, reminded me that it's nothing I could control. And this control piece it's a pivot point between reaction and response, at least one of the things I'll talk about. So 
why am I talking about response and reaction and why I'm using that as an illustration? When something triggers a reaction in you, and I'm going to use you as an example, again, it might not be you, it might be your friend you know, so if it isn't you, just take it as a possibility for your life, maybe your history, maybe not now, because maybe you're one of the few percent that doesn't get triggered by things in the world. If you are, do you interact with the world? Because it's a very triggering an environment. Let's just be clear. The world is not a soft place to be at times. It can be very triggering. Events, things, people, interactions, civilization. is so uncivilized at times. Anyway, bringing you back to this topic. When something happens to trigger you, and it is a trigger because it triggers a reaction that's, that's almost um, too fast to catch. And this is also part of it too, is a timing thing. When you're triggered and you react, what you're doing is almost responding without, no, it's not, excuse me, not responding. You're reacting without conscious control. And you're also responding without, you're reacting rather, without conscious choice. Choice and control, they fit in there as well, get to those as well. <laughs> what basically happens is event A happens and then reaction B is your response. Well, it's not response, it's a reaction. You can flush in those words. But the thing about it is when you react, what's happening is, be, is again, outside your control, outside your choice, what's literally happening is you're being played. Yes, you've been played in the sense that the event that happened causes a reaction from you that is putting you in place of being a victim. Now, I'm using this word carefully because some people have an issue with the word victim, but here's the thing. If you're not in control of your choices, then outside influences will control you and you will be a victim to those. Um, and there's a whole other area I'm not gonna get into which is, around, which is around things from abuse and PTSD and other things too, that put you in a position where you may not have conscious control. In fact, I may see if I can touch into that gently afterwards or later on, so stay tuned. So back into the reaction piece. Say for example, you're in a toxic relationship at work and your boss, just to use an example, likes to mess with you and demand things from you that, he, that they know will upset you. And you, unfortunately, haven't really gotten clear that they're playing you. And so you react to things they do very quickly, automatically, and basically what happens, you become a puppet on the strings of their control. That's the victim position. I don't think anybody wants to be the victim, but some people unfortunately get comfortable in that place because they don't know how to get out of it. So this might help you get out of it. So what, stay tuned. When something happens, first of all, be very clear. You don't have to react. That's a big ask for some people I know. The thing about reaction is it's so quick because it happens below the level of conscious thought. And that's one of the tricks of this. The reaction is almost animalistic. It's below the level of conscious choice, conscious control, conscious volition and the ability to respond. And so it's almost out of your control, which might be victimizing because suddenly you end up doing something, saying something, throwing something that later you're gonna regret because you didn't have conscious control. So the option or the other choice of this is learning how to be responsive and responsible, as in being able to respond. I'm looking back to some things I, I, I learned many, many years ago because I'm just it's starting to drop in place of things I was talking about before. So response is a conscious choice. Basically, reaction is an unconscious, automatic reaction. Response is a conscious choice made to respond. There's two different things. When you choose to respond, you are no longer a victim. You are no longer a puppet on the strings. When you respond, you're doing it from a place of, yes, I will respond to this situation. Different from reaction, where you're doing it without thinking, without control, without any sense of autonomy. So reaction versus response are very different experiences. The reactivity is, um, I'm just trying to think about, I don't think of any good analogies, but frankly, it's just the way I've, told, the way I've said it, is the way I've said it. So I'm getting something in my line of sight that's throwing me off, all right. So responsibility. The ability to respond is something that we all have. But for some people, and I went through trainings to learn how to do this, I wasn't good at this at the beginning, but I'm better at it now. And I teach this is how do you become responsive so you can choose to respond to situations around you 
from a place of centeredness, neutrality, and choice. This is where your control comes back to you. And you do not have to be a victim or a puppet to somebody else's manipulations. So back in that scenario I talked about with the um, abusive boss, when you realize that the person who's abusing you is doing because they think they're in charge of you, which they're not, doesn't matter how much, doesn't matter who the, they are, be a boss or whatever it is, they're not in control of you. You can cooperate with yourself and you can actually respond to them in a way that's different from the way they want you to, because this is the thing. When someone's attempting to manipulate you, they're looking for a certain response. That's the reaction that they're hoping you'll get from you. When you take a breath, when you stop, and I'll throw some ideas at you in a moment about how to do that, and you look at them and respond a different way than they wanted, first of all, there's a certain selfish satisfaction that they get upset with you. <laughs> I've been there before. It's kind of, it's, it's an interesting place to be when you're actually attempting to be centered, but you're getting joy from upsetting them because they're not getting the response they wanted from you. It's all, cir it's all cir a circuit. But when you learn how to respond, it gives you your power back, it gives you your peace of mind back, and it does help you, one, to have more calmness in your emotional body, it becomes less triggering physically so you feel better, and it gives you peace of mind so you can be more relaxed, so it does help all three layers. Some of the ways you can do this is one, you can practice on your own when you're without anybody around, and just run scenarios through your mind of things that happened maybe that day or maybe the previous week that were triggering events for you, and you can look at them from a place of like, if I wanted to react differently or respond differently, how would I do that? And just run some scenarios through your mind at the same time and keep breathing. Because sometimes those triggering memories can be very volatile in your system and can actually re-energize the, um, what's the word? Sympathetic, I think sympathetic nervous system that basically is in a fight or flight mode and will react to the same scenario, even though it's not live, but it's in recorded. Like it's not, it's not live, it's memoric sort of thing. If you remember that commercial. So I'm dating myself on that one. What you can do though, at the same time is choose to be present in the moment and breathe. So you bring the scenario to mind, become aware of it again. But this time you look at it and you take it apart and realize, first of all, you're not in the scenario, you stepped free of it. Breathing in and breathing out and watching what's happening. And then if you choose to, and you can do this as a, like a video game if you imagine it, to go in and change the players and change the arena so you can actually, if you wanted to, Here's one of the ideas I've had before. Is if you look at, let's say for example, you're looking at the um, memory of your boss chewing him out two days ago, for example. Go in your mind and imagine, mock that up again. This time, breathe calmly, breathe easily. And if you wanted to, go to, go to that image you have. And if you wanted to do something creative, shall we say, maybe you change their outfit to a clown's outfit. I'm being serious about this in a silly way. But what if you change their appearance so they no longer threaten you? so that you actually can step it forward and imagine when you see them again in person that they are that clown character, for example. So that what they do, not to make you laugh, but to stop you being afraid and reactive. This is a powerful little technique and it sounds simplistic and silly. You practice this, it will change your relationship with other people in a way that will support you in being free because you'll no longer be triggered and reactive or be on the, the puppet strings of anybody else. So anybody you have challenges with that is triggering reactions in you when they come into your space, be it a boss, a relative, a partner, ex-partner, neighbor, child, sibling, spiritual teacher, whoever. One of the things that I recommend this is just one I'm throwing out there. There's a bunch of other ones too, but, and you can reach out to me if you want some help on this. But one of the things you can do is to mock up them in your mind's eye, dressed or tired or with weird makeup whatever it is to make them look basically silly intentionally not to laugh at them but making them silly that takes away the threat that you may be carrying internally because reactivity usually comes from some sort of threat or programming that puts you in a place where you don't have any choice of volition as I mentioned when you can choose and when you can set up the scenario so when you enter into it you are free then you become much more able to respond and take care of yourself and be calm at the same time this is game-changing stuff when you do this. And again, you may already be doing this, in which case you can pass it on to your friends. But I hope this has been of relevance to you because this is a subtle piece, but it can change every single relationship in your life. 
even though my work, my coaching is primarily around the area of relationship, a lot of what I teach um, extends beyond romantic relationship. It can actually be very effective in every relationship. In my, in my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, yes, there are 50 principles for healthy relationships, but I would say a bunch of them, I don't ex didn't count exactly how many, but a bunch of those topics are relevant to all relationships, especially ones with yourself. Yeah, I'll put a link in the comments for the book so you can find it if you want to check it out. But I want to make this very clear. You have the ability to respond rather than react when you know how to do it. Oh, I mentioned earlier about PTSD and, and abuse. Some traumas, some challenges can make it very, very hard to learn how to respond to scenarios that trigger and remind you of those experiences. I understand that. If you haven't dealt with those, I highly encourage you to go seek somebody you trust, a counselor, coach, therapist, guide, groups, group process, something like that, that can help you to realign those triggers so you don't no longer get triggered by them. It's like diffusing a bomb in a way, and it sounds dramatic to say it that way, but the truth is when you have that much of a traumatic embedded memory, when someone presses the button, so to speak, or pushes your buttons, it's like a bomb going off. So learning how to diffuse that bomb and take the pressure out, take the explosive out, so to speak, can be totally freeing and enabling you to be free to choose life more consciously. So I'll leave you with that thought in case you're dealing with something at that level. Again, I said I was going deep. In my coaching, I do help some of my clients with, with relationship type stuff, which can include trauma. I'm not a specialist in PTSD, just to be clear. But if you're dealing with something that is that challenging, I do recommend getting the help. And for some people, I can help them. I will leave a link in the comments for a discussion session with me because that's what I do with my coaching clients for women who want to help around relationship-centric challenges. If you want to refer to somebody else, send me a message over social media or use the contact form on my website, which if you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, there's a link there you can go to, to contact me and I'll see if I can find someone who can help you in that specific, specific area because I don't want to leave you hanging. But the reality, again, is very simple. Reacting to other people's control is being a puppet on their strings and being a victim. Being able to respond for freedom of choice gives you your power back and reminds you who you really are. Because who you really are has freedom to choose. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I'm leaving you right there. <laughs> that was a good point to end on. So again, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. If you want to find replays, you can watch them on my business page, which is barryselby.author. Also on my YouTube channel, please subscribe at Barry Selby, which is on Facebook, which is my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where these all live. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. I will, again, put the links in the comments for my book and for a discovery session with me. Um, and I invite you to practice what I suggested. Try it out and see. Learn how to take control back and how you can really be in your power again, because you deserve it. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel, and uh, I wish you well. Have a pleasant evening. Bye.